Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the stream. Uh, this is Sage Clements from Sage Knows IT. Um, as you know, October is Cybersecurity Awareness uh, Month, and I am doing my part on giving you guys some great tips and quick tips and tricks on how you can better protect your organization um, from cyber breaches, um, network breaches, cyber attacks, things of that nature. Um, this week, I wanted to do a little bit of a pivot and go into the physical security space as opposed to the network employee awareness, which is what we did um, on the last set of, of videos here. Um, so before we get started, just make sure that you hit the subscribe button, the like button. Um, also love the engagement that you guys have shown on the previous videos. So please be sure to uh, continue that engagement by you know, commenting on the on the video itself. So physical security, I wanted to go ahead and start with um, deterrence. So deterrence are basically controls that you can put into place to prevent an adversary or at least at the very least slow them down um, to prevent unauthorized access into a facility. Most of the time it's a facility um, that we're that we're talking about. So they could be things such as um, um, you know, tenants or or guards, um, security guards, um, law enforcement could be a fence, you know, turnstiles, uh, things of that nature. Um, and again, it's not necessarily uh, meant to to stop them, although that is ideally the goal, but at least at the very least to slow them down to prevent to allow another control to come into place to kind of prevent that unauthorized user from accessing um, your your infrastructure because once an adversary is inside the uh inside your facility um you know the the possibilities of what they do is endless and um your goal is to make sure that your facility is as secure as possible um yeah just as secure as possible so um i thought we'd take a you know a quick peek at some controls and, and the level of controls and I, I like to add before we you know looked at some pictures and things of that nature but the level of controls that you have in place will often be dictated by the type of information or resources that you're trying to protect. Um, for instance, um, it wouldn't be ideal to have like a fence with barbed wire around a library, right? The resources, the you know, the primary resources that you're trying to protect in there are books and maybe some electronics like laptops and things of that nature, computers and stuff like that. But it would be overkill in those types of situations. Whereas you contrast that with maybe a a prison, for instance. You know, a prison is meant to keep people in and not allow them to come out. Um, so you'll see, you know, it, it wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't be feasible for them just to have um, maybe magnetic doors um, as their sole defense, right? It, it just, it wouldn't be practical. Um, what if I just took a brick and, you know, ran it through the window and uh, everyone was able to come straight out? Like, you don't, you, you want to make sure that the controls are, that you're putting into place makes sense for the resources or the, for the resources that you're trying to protect. Um, so, you know, that's I just keep that kind of in mind. So let's take a look at some examples of um, some controls, some physical controls that are in place. Now, you know, there's some uh, some guard spikes there. Um, again, I, you know, if it if the control has the ability to cause bodily injury to someone, um, that's a good indication that the facility that you're trying to protect is is of high value. Um, so you'll really only see these in like, you know, military, maybe some data centers, uh, prisons, um, or correctional facilities, things of that nature. So you see these spikes here, um, maybe even to some degrees, maybe some type of armory or, um, or, or law enforcement area. Um, I, you know, I've seen, I've seen, uh, some training facilities, some military and, and uh, law enforcement training facilities kind of have those as well. Maybe some research facilities that may be dealing with uh, biosafety levels three and four um, would kind of have that as well. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Um, gates are common, you know, uh, you know, eight or nine feet gates around facilities um, are also something common. And again, 
keep them people could jump over the gate right but the goal is to to not just to stop them but maybe slow them down enough to where you can have another control in place to prevent them from coming in um central station alarm systems are also in there i know that that's not listed on any of these photos but central station alarm systems are essentially you if uh a, maybe a silent alarm or it could even be a loud alarm but it's you know once that's triggered it calls law enforcement to come to the facility so that's a great physical control um surveillance equipment is also you know a really good control as well um turnstiles which you can kind of see here um there's two sets of turnstiles here so the one that's on the left here is probably meant more for uh commercial facilities or public transit kind of areas um, where there's a lot of uh traffic that comes in and out um, and you want to authenticate each user one by one either by some type of ticketing system or using some type of key fob to to get in to authenticate that particular uh user um, whereas you see some of these metal ones here um, where it only allows one person. Again, the, the control is to allow only one person in at a time to prevent piggybacking, um, kind of like the video that we you know, previously talked about. Um, but you can see here you got the fence around there, the barbed fence, so no one can go over it. Um, and then you've got the turnstile that only allows one person at a time into the in that particular area. Um, so you have that, you know, some more gated fences, um, you know, a brick wall is also considered to be like a, a fence itself um, so that's definitely a, a good f uh, a good fit there um, don't see any other good ones here's another turnstile one here um, and I'm gonna kind of blow this up a little bit so you guys can see it there we go um, I don't even know what that is right there um, you know, there, there's a boot here, I guess, like if you have some type of segways on premise or you want to lock those down and prevent people from stealing that. It's also a good security control. It doesn't necessarily have just to be in the building. Again, it could be resources that are on the premise that you're trying to protect um, as well. Um, magnetic doors are also good ones. Um, those gates, you know, that you can kind of come in and out, you know, in parking garages. Those are also good deterrents as well to prevent people from coming in and out uh, without authenticating um, authentication meaning the you know that they have the reason reasonable uh, expectation to be there and um, yeah so that you know these are all some good examples there so um, again this is just a broad introduction to um, you know to physical security um, next uh, the next video we're probably going to be talking um, more along the lines of uh, I you know I'm kind of interested. Maybe we'll do a maybe we'll do some um, dumpster diving because we've got some good stories on dumpster diving. So maybe we'll do that. So if you found this useful, please hit the thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button, the like button, put in the comments, share this video out. Uh, thank you so much. Be sure to to uh, find me on www.sagenosit and all of my credentials are right there. I never get the never get that right ever. So uh, thank you so much. Y'all know the drill. Keep it real.